What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And we have a very special announcement. Your girls will be at the Black Effect Network Podcast Festival. Yes, absolutely. We're going to be there April 27th. And make sure y'all get y'all tickets at blackeffect.com. Yes, Horrible Decisions will be there, Carefully Reckless, Deeply Well, and many more. It's going to be so fun. So if you've never seen Poor Minds Live, I'm telling you, you're not going to want to miss this. So go to blackeffect.com and get your tickets. Period. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode of Poor Minds. Where a drunk mind speaks sober thought. We got a guest today. We, we got, got a guest, guest today. today. Uh. Y'all know every time I got a guest, like, I got a story and I'll be excited. Ooh. But <laughs> I'm going to keep I'm gonna keep it cool today. I'm going to keep it cool today. But I will say, like... This started my little, um, my little rebel era. Like when I started mm. like taking my edibles mm -hmm. and like smoking, cause my nigga used to listen to like Cush Orange Juice. Uh -huh. I was like, yeah, I like to smoke. <laughs> <laughs> when I didn't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> but we got Wiz Khalifa in the building. <laughs> What's happening? Yes, I'm What's so excited up? that you're here. I'm happy to be here. I'm Thank excited. you guys for having me. So you, uh, you know, I got another story now. Let me tell I'm you happy, a story. I'm happy What's to be a part of your please? rebel phase. Yes, <laughs> well, this is not my rebel phase. This is actually like you were going live on Twitter, I think, yeah. and like you were like, "Oh, I want to go on a podcast and blah blah blah." Mm -hmm. And I guess a lot of people in the comments was like, "Oh, go on, poor minds, yeah. Andrea, oh yeah. yeah." And like a lot of people started, they like, started sending it to like, us. Sending it to yeah. me. Yeah. So I was like in the middle of the club, like drunk, having yeah. a good time. And somebody said to me, I was like, what is he saying? Because I couldn't hear. I'm like, what is he saying? I'm like, why is everybody sending this to me? So I was like, went into the bathroom and I just had a ball. I was in the bathroom screaming. I was like, Wiz Khalifa finna yeah. come on poor my Period. <laughs> Period. So Real we are shit. happy to have we you. We are, happy yes. To be here. Thank you. Yeah. Y'all are bossed up. I appreciate what y'all do. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Y'all are hella cool. Like, y'all are funny and y'all. The way that y'all do y'all's content, I fuck with it heavy. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. We appreciate that. Yes, yeah. it's definitely giving like, we just like to sit on the couch, talk to Chill. people. Like we family. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that's what it should be. It should be like, you get a little bit of business done, but then you kind of like just get to know each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. I Hell agree. Yeah. So, what? Well, now, I want to ask you a question. Go ahead. Were you bo just born in North Dakota or are you from North Dakota? Yeah, no, nah, I was born in North Dakota. Okay, and I where were you raised at? I was raised all over the world, really. Oh, oh I didn't okay. Know that. Yeah, but I'm from Pittsburgh. That's, my That's what I yeah. remember. I was like, I don't, where's North she Dakota? She did say that because, you know, we be liking to do our little research. Yeah. And I was like, wait, he from North Dakota. And I, how the hell he end up there? Because ain't yeah. no black people there. No, nah, <laughs> my parents was in the military. Uh -huh. So when they met, um, they were. Fucking, you know, my mom is from Pittsburgh. My dad is from New York. Mm -hmm. So they met, and then they had me and my brother. I was born in North Dakota. My brother was born on Guam. Mm -hmm. Oh. And from there, I moved around my whole life. I lived in Germany. I lived in Japan throughout the earlier years of my life. Mm -hmm. But then by the time I was a teenager is when I moved back to Pittsburgh, and that's where I grew up. That's where all my family's at. Okay. That's oh, okay. where, like, your home base yeah, is. Yeah. Okay. So it's like you're from there, but it's like you're kind of from everywhere. Yeah, I'm from everywhere. I'm yeah. from Atlanta when I'm here. Uh, yeah. Period. Because, yeah. baby, we was doing our research, and I was, like, trying to look up fun facts. Yeah. And I'm like, the fun, <laughs> fun facts, fact. like, ten fun facts about being from North Dakota, Teddy Roosevelt okay. <laughs> was one of them. And I, I was just like, that. um... Okay. I love North Dakota, but like that's not a part of who I am. Yeah. Right. <laughs> not at all. Right. Like, at, at all. Do you feel like moving around, like when you were growing up, it kind of helped like you learn about a bunch of different cultures? Yeah, yeah and... for sure. I was always a little bit different yeah. than everybody in my crowd, but for sure, just meeting different types of people. Mm -hmm. And not just black and white people, but Filipino people. Yeah. yeah. And German people mm -hmm. and all types of uh, ethnicities. It, it really, really brought in, you know, my ability to connect with, with, with people. But I always... 
felt the most at home in Pittsburgh with my family. Mm -hmm. You know, Pittsburgh is is definitely either black or white, and it's either you got money or you're super hood. Like, right. right. It is just what it is. Right. And that's where I thrive the most at. You know mm. what I mean? That's where I really come from, and that's where my energy comes from. But yeah. just being able to connect and, 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 you know, find similarities with everybody yeah. was uh, an advantage of growing up around the world. I that. Yeah. See, because I grew up in a small town, so when I was like, when I moved to Houston, I was big eyes. Yeah, that's, yeah. Why people, that's where you fuck up at. Yeah, because you you were good, so you traveled around like yeah. nothing really. Like when you got in the industry, I'm sure it wasn't like a uh, shock to you. Yeah, not really a shock, but it was always for me. If I moved, if I went down south, because I lived in Oklahoma before. I lived You've been in, around. Yeah, I've been in South Carolina, nigga. I lived in Sumter, South Carolina. Like, that shit is country as hell. I'm like, I don't even know. Nah, I was like, I've never even heard of that before. It's super country down there. But they always t talk talk about how white I talk and shit. So, like, really? if, but the cool thing about living in different places was I always got put on a different music. Mm -hmm. So, when I was down south, I got put on a chopped and screwed and all that shit. Okay, you know a little yeah, something yeah, now. Hell Hold on. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> and it was when Lil Flip up. and like Chameleon there, all them niggas was first coming up. It was before yeah. it was mainstream and shit. Mm -hmm. So, I got to experience real waves, like just living in different places. So, I really caught an advantage. Of when I was in the industry, I'm like, oh, I know this music, I know that music. Mm -hmm. I already listened to Three Six. I can rap like I'm in Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yeah, mm -hmm. nigga, I got all Wu Tang shit because that's you know what I mean. So yeah, it really, really helped me out, like being in the industry for sure. So I do want to ask you about that too. Like you saying, like, oh, people tell you talk like you're white. Cause, uh -huh. I mean, I don't deal with it now because I'm grown. And I feel like, I mean, I've been around the you used to get time. It. But I used to deal with that a yeah. lot because I went to an all white school growing up. So how did you like deal with that? Like people, you feel like you didn't? Did you feel like you didn't fit in with black people sometimes? Um, <laughs> I, I love my niggas. Right, bro. right. Yeah. I get because. <laughs> You're always either gonna be too white for the for the homies or yeah. too black for the white people. Yeah, yeah. It's always one kid who's like that, and that was always me. Uh -huh. But it never it never made me like feel some type of way. It just is what it is. Mm -hmm. Like when you grow up like that, you gotta know how. Like when we, we call cracker jokes, ripping on niggas. Like yeah. you gotta yeah. have rips. Like if you talk a certain way, if you look a certain way, you wear glasses. It is what it is. Niggas is going to be on you. Yeah. So it really didn't make me feel some type of way. It just made my skin a little bit thicker and made me embrace who I am. Right. Mm -hmm. I talk with my accent everywhere I go. Or, nigga, when I'm in New Orleans, I could say the words that they say. Or Come if on, I'm baby. in New York, I could. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, everybody talk different. So it's like, they do. For real for real, it's about just being able to blend in and communicate with the people who you're around. Mm -hmm. And I could talk however the fuck I want to talk, but Period. I know what's going on. So. Right. Yeah, that's true. Hell yeah. So it just it made me more confident for real, for real. Right, because yeah. I was like, it seems like you kind of have the attitude like I don't give a fuck, like mm -hmm. I'm me, like, and I think that's what was so influential about you because you were like doing your own just thing. Being yourself. And niggas really started like emulating you and your style and mm -hmm. everything like yeah, that. Yeah. So you always kind of had that confidence. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I yeah. see you. <laughs> now we definitely kind of wanted to talk a little bit about your music career too. Yeah. So like. How was it creating Black and Yellow? Because I feel like that's what that was like your biggest, like, uh -huh. or your big mainstream song yeah. that made you really mainstream. Sure. So how was that? It was cool. Um, like she was saying, I had done mixtapes like Cushion Orange. Right. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of mixtapes, like Flight School, Star Power, even from Prince of the City days. Um, my fans have been following me. Mm -hmm. But it was like Black and Yellow was my time to show the world what I could do. Right. And at that point, I had done so many different types of songs. I had the weed music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had done uh, Cabin Fever. Yep. I had done shit like The Thrill. So I was all over the place and just showing everybody the types of music that I could make. Mm -hmm. And my 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 goal is to reach everybody in the world mm -hmm. because that's how I am. Mm -hmm. So my music is to translate to freaking Africa or fucking Korea or wherever it's at. So when I made Black and Yellow, I just put all of the skills that I had. I put my mixtape skills. I put my songwriting skills. Mm -hmm. I put my listening to other producer skills together because, you know, being on Atlantic for the first time and shit like that, mm -hmm. it's a little bit different coming from a mixtape and then start working with people at a label and mm -hmm. to make them believe in you. Right. And um, that was my first time, you know, walking in a room and putting the joint out in a nigga salad and being <laughs> like, yeah, nigga, this is Wiz. Like, salad. yeah, I had to let them know who I was. And they and they, and they they agreed with it and they pushed it and the record went number one. Right. Because I wasn't afraid to like be myself and talk about my city, Pittsburgh, and talk about what was important. Yeah. 
So it was a really good moment, you know, just for me as a as a person and as an artist. Like, did Would you, you know? say that song changed yeah. your career? Yeah, for sure, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent changed my career. Um, in ways that I knew it was gonna be a great song, but I think it was a combination of the Steelers going to the Super Bowl that mm-hmm, year. Mm-hmm. Everybody, all the eyes were on Pittsburgh. Yeah, and it, I was just, you know, it was, just, I, it was my time. Yeah, yeah. 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 When you were in the studio, like recorded though, did you know like it was gonna be that big? Like, did you have that feeling like, yeah, I just think this might was be all fun. your homies yeah. like, yeah, Blake. No, my my homies <laughs> was looking at me like, what the fuck? Like, why did you record this song? Bro? Yeah, like they didn't know what I was doing or why I was doing it. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. But right. to me. I was emulating Snoop Dogg because mm. when Snoop came out with Gin and Juice, mm-hmm. he, was, he was showing niggas who the fuck he was. Right, right, right. It was like, nigga, this is me. And I wanted that song to be like that. Or like the Snoop Doggy Dog song, like Snoop Doggy mm-hmm. Dog. I wanted that to be my moment uh, like that. And that's why I did the video with me standing on top of the Dairy Mart. That's that's our corner store in our hood. Okay. Mm-hmm. And he did the same thing with, uh, with him standing on the record store in mm-hmm. Long Beach. I was like, this is my moment. Yeah. I fucking, I'm here. You yeah. know what I mean? So it was definitely intentional, like from the song, from the video, all of that shit. I wanted that to be my moment, mm-hmm. my standout, you know, record that when you say Wiz Khalifa, like that's the one that you think about. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And I want to go back a little bit though, like, because let's talk about Taylor Gang. So you had everybody, like, yeah. baby, I used mm-hmm. to love. <laughs> bad, I was putting up Chuck Stone, period. You could not <laughs> tell me nothing. I had some holes in every, every color. Yeah. color. And they used to have them for cheap at Academy. Taylor yeah. Gang. Yeah. Taylor <laughs> Gang. Like, you couldn't tell you us. You couldn't tell me <laughs> nothing. I used to think I was the freshest bitch out. Hell yeah. All fucking week. I think that was like the era when everybody, we throwing up the peace mm-hmm. signs, yeah. we showing our chucks. Like, that it was, was swag. We was wearing it was. It was, yeah. it was wearing palm. Yes. Yeah. Because you have to realize, like, niggas was only wearing Jordans and shit. Mm-hmm. So it was like the time <laughs> that people, like, really started changing up their swag yeah. for real, yeah. for real. Because they seen you doing it. Yeah. Right. And it was like, you made it cool. Because, yeah. like, like I said, if you didn't have them J's, you wasn't doing nothing. Yeah. And it was like that with the Chucks for a minute, too. Yes. Oh, yeah. It was a good time because, like, it was, I'm, I'm like an alternative nigga. So it's like, I hang around. Pretty much all my family from Pittsburgh is street niggas, but I'm not like a real street nigga. Right, right. right. So I gave niggas an alternative to be like, I know what it's like to be around street niggas, but I'm not that nigga. Right. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of people just connected with it to be Mm -hmm. like, yo, I just want to get fresh. I just want to smoke weed. I want to be around girls. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It became a lifestyle. It's like, yeah, it's easier to do it like that. And I do want to go back a little bit. Talk about the first time you smoked weed. Yeah. The very first time you got high, you was like... First time I smoked weed. Yes. Tell me about um, that experience, the first time you smoked. Damn. I don't even remember the first time I smoked. I remember when I first started getting stoned. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'll let you know about that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I, when, I, when I was coming up, like, my mom smoked weed. Uh-huh. For real? Yeah, y'all, y'all's parents smoke weed? No. My, my daddy smoked. used to back in the day. My mama used to tell me, but while I've been alive, I never seen him smoke weed. Yeah. Smell Mm-mm. No. And I got in trouble the one time they found a little uh doobie in my back seat. Oh mm-hmm. thought you was rolling it up. Probably mad because you didn't give it to them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I ain't see it. My daddy was like, I found it where it's at. Yeah, yeah, he knew where it was. <laughs> he was like, hold on, I know what that smell is. <laughs> So yeah. you said your mom used to smoke. Yeah, my mom smoked weed openly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. House. Okay. Yeah, she was like, you know, fuck that shit. Yeah. And um, you know, I seen her function off a of pot and be able to, you know, take care of me and my sibling and go to work and you know what I'm saying. It wasn't as legal. Right. Back then, mm-hmm. but it was like she had her homegirls and they would do what they do and mm-hmm. that was a thing. So I was always around pot. But I never really experienced it until I started uh, being in the studio and recording. Mm. And um, I was in high school, but I would get a work release from school to go to the studio. Like that was like my job at the time. I know that's right. Yeah, hell yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Really? yeah. So I was leaving school early to go to the studio and shit, and just being around the homies and shit. You mm. know what I mean? They were always blazing, like just rolling up. And in Pittsburgh, we smoked heavy, like. Niggas, everybody got either an ounce or a quarter or a halfie or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody got big weed to blow in Pittsburgh. So, like, me smoking like this is just representing the bird because oh, everybody okay. smokes like this. Back mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's just how we smoke. And, um, yeah, so I grew up, I'm, I was just coming up around the homies and shit, and there was like, you know, Wiz, I know you young as hell, but, like, 
as soon as you start smoking, bro, your music is gonna be crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, nah, I don't need that shit. You know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this. Yeah. And as soon as I started smoking, my music like, it went crazy. It started going crazy. And I don't want to just blame it on the smoking, but the weed opened up. Your mind, yeah. 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 Listening to things differently, me writing things differently. I would watch movies different. And I would just, you know, my imagination was a little bit different. I was able to apply that shit. Totally different, and um, I found out like pot was my thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like that. See, pot not my thing. Me either, because I'm not a be functioning right smoker. Be in the right setting. If y'all smoke with me, y'all be perfectly. Fine. You think so? Because yeah. I every time I smoke, I either am laughing, like I cannot stop laughing, You're to laugh. or I fall asleep. Yeah, you supposed to sleep. <laughs> like I said, I smoke. But I want to have a balance though. Like yeah. I want to still have fun. Like I the the well, stories people thing tell me. Is you got you can't you can't smoke blunts. Okay. Okay. No blunt. No blunt. Yeah, and then the second thing is you gotta like take like two puffs and then you know what I'm that's saying. That's why All I say one, I smoke one weed. Yeah. One weed. That's the same. The same weed. That's the uh, that's the third. That's like the professional advice right yeah. there. Yeah. Is find the weed that that works. You gotta you. find your strength. But I tell yeah. people all the time. Don't give me all that good. I don't want no good weed. You don't want Reggie. No, you don't oh, want no blue. No, I don't want to be that high. You need the good Pass weed. Pass me the Reggie. You need the good weed. I want that bullshit. Nah, your body responds to that. <laughs> there we is. I'm not smoking that good oh, shit. But like you said, you put the good shit though, and you will be high. Yeah, you'll be good. Too high. Yeah. <laughs> now, I can't afraid. fuck with edibles though. That's that's something I can't. Oh, I love a little. You edible love now. edibles. I cannot fuck with edibles. Like the last time I took an edible, I seen a leprechaun. For real? Yeah. Okay. That sounds kind of fun. I mean, fun. I thought I did. Now, see, this is why. I probably didn't really see one, but that's what I saw. That sounds fun. <laughs> I'm trying to see some leprechauns. Today. I was, no, nigga, you're going to be scared. I was scared. Let's go see some leprechauns. That's what I'm saying. He enjoys it. Hell yeah. Absolutely that would freak the fuck me out. Not. It was Twitter. freaking me out for sure. <laughs> I was about to cry. Yeah. Remember that time I got high and I almost jumped out the car? Oh, yes. A time, though. You did. And, but that wasn't off of edible, though. That was off of blunt. That's why. But I don't he smoke. said, don't smoke blunt. Ask me the bullshit. She definitely almost jumped out of them. Well, no, you did jump out the car. But I'm alive to tell the story. That's all that matters. All right. Okay, so before we get Did into the next question, uh, you know what? The car was like barely. It moving. was yeah. Oh. I was kind of ghost riding the whip. We was on a feeder road, that's so a, she didn't really. That sounds awesome. Like it was a good time. That's that sounds I'm amazing. I'm not totally against. You guys sound great to get high I with. Mean, Ooh, leprechauns, <laughs> leprechauns jumping out of moving vehicles. Let's get it. Don't try that at home. <laughs> Don't, Don't try, try this at home. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so Todd, what are we drinking today? All right, so today, of course, we're talking about smoking and high, all that stuff. This one is called the Up in Smoke, Ooh. all right? Ooh. So what this one is going to include, we have a little tequila in there. We have some Watermelon juice, some lime juice. We have it topped with a ginger, a sparkling ginger lime, like carbonated uh, sparkling water, and then topped with some sparkling rosé. And then we garnished it with a watermelon slice and some fresh mint leaves. And then we smoked it in here, some like some cherry, Mm -hmm. apple, wood smoke. And so now that is the up in smoke. This is really good. I'm almost done. I need another one. You crushed yours. I like that. Drink it like a Capri Sun. Let me tell you. (laughs) That's what it tastes like. <laughs> but that be the problem, because that's why her drinks be sneaking up they on always Because it tastes like a me. Capri Sun. Yeah, let me get four of them. Mm-hmm. And let me ask you something real quick before we get into the topics. Because it was literally like one day... You were skinny, and then I woke up, and you was like swole as fuck. Mm-hmm. Like you had gained what I think it was, you said like thirty pounds yeah. of muscle, yeah, yeah, which is really, really hard to do. Like impressive, yeah. It's really hard. So talk about what made you go into like your health journey and stuff. Shit, I just honestly, I just started going to the gym one day, and I stuck with it. Yeah, I didn't think I was gonna get you know into fitness or anything. Like yeah, that. and me being a skinny dude, like that shit wasn't the wave, like yeah. being, mm-hmm. being in the gym, like, you know what I mean? But yeah. I went to a really, really good gym, uh-huh. um, called Unbreakable, and they put me on a good program, and they just supported me, and then the uh, the fighting aspect, like the MMA shit, mm-hmm. that's where I really took off at. Yeah. Like, I'm really, really good at that. So um, it just kind of just put me in the thing where I wanted to learn more, do more, keep building my body, work on my diet, 
get some more sleep. And then out of nowhere, that shit just changed my whole You was body. ripped up now. Yeah. yeah. Now, let me ask you this. Was you making them videos on purpose? Because you know you be having them tight oh, with the, uh, on. <laughs> and See, those... <laughs> I didn't think that was going to do all of that. No, you, you... no, I did. Because for me... Like, you know, I'm a very free person. Not I ain't know my Clearly. meat. Clearly. I ain't know my meat was out. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't doing I wasn't I wasn't trying to show all of that, but and then when I started to figure out that that's what people were looking at. <laughs> you was like, well. I kind of started teasing everybody a little bit. I did. I nah, just a little bit, but but yeah. then I had to like wipe it all off and be like, all right, let's start, you, let's, start like let's start clean. Let's start clean. Do it. You was, you was kicking that leg a little too high. <laughs> I said, That's how I really on, kick. Wiz. But you that was I was impressed. Like no, I said, yeah, like me too. To, working out is especially now that we because we're in the gym like heavy now. We started working out with our trainer like maybe like seven, eight months ago. Mm -hmm. And we go like three or four times a week, yeah. and it's hard. It's hard. It to takes a lot. Like, yeah, like so. I'm proud of it, so, like, I like to show it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, we know you like to show it. <laughs> We've yeah. seen it. We believe that now. <laughs> but I will say, I think it's harder. <laughs> Very proud. But I think it's harder to gain weight than to lose it, to be honest. Because mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. like you're really, really fighting genetics really hard. Yeah, harder sure. to gain muscle. Yeah, it's harder to gain muscle. Yeah, because you're going to gain weight if you eat bad and Period. drink and do all of that shit. But yeah, gaining muscle is definitely hard for sure. And you just got to do... It, it has to be a strategic plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's real strategic. It takes a lot of work. So, mm -hmm. so let me get a little messy real quick. Let's that go. My drink done hit me a little bit. Okay, so... <laughs> You have been in public relationships, you know, pretty, like, I feel like you're a relationship guy. For like, sure. I, I feel like you always have a girlfriend. For sure. Like, you're a lover boy. Yeah, yeah. So, do you like, because I feel like you've dated all types of women. Do you like dating, like, a regular girl, like, who's not really known? Or do you kind of like dating women that are popular? Mm -hmm. Like, what's, what's your tea? It depends for me. Um, it definitely works if if the 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 woman like understands where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have to be. You don't gotta be famous. Yeah. You don't gotta be like a millionaire or anything like that. I like people who I could like talk to, connect with, yeah. experience stuff with. And if it's a regular girl and she can handle the experiences that come with my life, then you know, that's that's what I'm into. When mm -hmm. you say handle, does that mean like Cause a lot of times people be like handle my lifestyle, aka I'm gonna be outside. Nah, nah, life. nah, not not that. Like, I mean, women are attracted to me, so that's a part of I'm what I saying. what I do. But that's that's not even what I'm selling. Right. That's real life. So yeah. if we walk in a room, you got to deal with ten chicks who is like, oh, Wiz, yeah. blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's gonna happen. For I mean, sure. it be like that. Maybe even more. Oh, and you damn! Got, you got to stand ten toes and be like, yeah, I love that nigga too. <laughs> <laughs> I, most, I love that nigga most, too. It's crazy. Yeah, most they women gonna fold in way. that particular situation. Right, right, right. And then there, there's a lot that comes with it. There's a lot of you know confidence and reassurance mm -hmm. conversations that have to be had. And you know, some people they don't make it through the through the deep water. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because I'm not gonna lie. Like, I feel like for uh, the average woman, like if you're dating um, a regular woman, that might be intimidating to yeah. know, like, you know, your ex is yeah. like Amber Rose yeah. or oh, you know, something like that. Yeah. So how do you navigate that? Because she's an amazing woman. People, yeah. know, she literally was came on the scene just for being fine. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like that would be intimidating for somebody yeah, to come yeah, in. Yeah, for sure. So how do you navigate that? I just have, we just have conversations. Yeah. There's a lot of things that I do just out of me being natural um, for my love for Amber. and That's my baby's mom. So mm -hmm. I'm going to take care of her. I'm going to show her respect. And there's some women who they'll take offense to that. Yeah. They'll Ooh. want you to treat your baby's mom like shit or they won't understand like the things that you do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes... If it crosses the line to to you, we got, we just got to have that conversation because mm. those are never my intentions. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think just keeping that clear, and then me and Amber, we're on we're so solid that those lines aren't you know what I mean? They're not blurry. So right. To somebody else, it might seem like hypothetically this could happen or that that could happen, but we ain't even on that. You know? yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know because sometimes yeah. I do feel like y'all not y'all, but like mm -hmm. if you're dealing with a man who has a baby mom, it's like. If they want to go and get back together, they probably going to do that. Nah, you for know sure. I mean, most men are, are like that. Most women, women are open to it. But I think we know how we're, we're, 
we're aware how good we are without that shit. Right. Yeah. So it's not worth fucking that up, yeah, like yeah. for that. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? That's way more mature and way more bossed up to think about it. Where it's like, you know, I'm gonna be with her for the rest of my life because she's my child's mother, but we're not in a relationship. We're not right. physically doing anything. Right. But on every other aspect, we good to go. Like yeah, that's, I feel like that's the vision. Like you know what I mean? Oh, for, like sure. That. Yeah. for sure. Yeah, and I think in those instances too, you have to make sure you as a woman, you have to make sure that you're in a relationship or you dating a man who really don't want to be with his baby mama yeah. anymore or really don't have feelings for her anymore. Yeah. I think that's where a lot of women mess up because yeah. you will be dating this man and then you upset because he doing X, Y, and Z or he mm. moving a certain way, but he still like her. He's still in love so. with her, or maybe she was the one who ended the relationship. Yeah. He didn't want to end yeah. it, and that's. Why he was forced to move on to you, mm-hmm. and that's why you feel in the weird energy. Like you gotta yeah. make sure that he not lying about shit, yeah. and that it really is what it is. Exactly, and that's why I was saying from my perspective, I have to keep clocking in to yeah. like, let you know, like, look, it's good. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm not on that, and explaining that shit because without the communication, it could definitely get you know fucked up. Mm-hmm. And a woman's not wrong for feeling that. Right. right. It's it's definitely the man's job in that situation to mm-hmm. keep everything cool and keep reassuring. And yeah, it might get annoying to have that conversation, but it's worth it. Like, right. Yeah. If you really and, love somebody. Yeah, if you yeah. really love somebody, you really fuck with somebody, you want it to work. And me personally, I never see nobody make it work the way that I do. So I, I'd be like, it yeah. is like I'm that's a, why I'd be like, it's cool to see like y'all. I'm the player of the year. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. that's that's real player shit. Yeah. You know? Everybody get along. Everybody's at the same events. We could go out together. The family is cool. Like, yeah. It don't got to be messy. Like, you know what I mean? Right. And it's really, really everybody's responsibility in that situation. I take a big role in that. Right. Mm-hmm. And I play my role. So. And that's good. That's And that's what I said before on an episode in the past. A lot of times it gets confusing when they're like still being physical with each other. Yeah. yeah so obviously sure. there's like going to be feelings there. Like if you had a child with somebody and y'all are still having sex and stuff, mm-hmm. that's when shit gets, you know, a little tricky. Yeah. You got to you gotta be bossed up. You got to think past that. Yeah. yeah it's for bigger sure. than that. that uh, and maybe I'll reach that level of maturity one day. Because I'm like, if I'm having a, if I have a baby for somebody... I'm fucking on that nigga. Forever? For real? Forever. Even if you, For like, real? got a new man? I probably. I don't know. There's a lot of there's Not a lot making of no promise. Start. I feel like if I move on from my baby daddy, like, once I have a kid, if I moved on from you, I've moved on. Maturity. Like, we just focused on co-parenting. Amen. I'm not, like, because if I've moved on, my new nigga dick better. Mm, uh, sometimes, Maybe. <laughs> not guaranteed. Well, why did you move on? Why not? No. There's a lot of people in the world to love. I mean, no. <laughs> I'm not fucking with my baby daddy. It just be seeming like it's too much drama that come with that. Like, if you and your baby daddy still be dibbling and dabbling with I like other. a little dibble-dabble. You have a little appetizer before you eat. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> y'all is right. I don't want that appetizer no more. <laughs> okay, so we got I'm off the in. menu. You right. off the menu? Damn. <laughs> Late seasonal. That's why I said, Amber, <laughs> Amber, you a better woman than me, sister. Late <laughs> seasonal menu. I don't know, in the winter. Okay. It's, no. it's a Christmas. cold outside. No, I'm, not coming. I'm, not, I'm not coming back. <laughs> we done pulled up the LA cream. I'm not coming back. <laughs> the mistletoe. We done, we done moved on. Damn, we done put little bash to bed. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> abs- absolutely not. All right, all yeah. right. Yeah, I'm one of them. Like, <laughs> You nah. a strict baby daddy. Yeah, nah, for real. And I like that because that's the type of nigga that make you feel secure. He a strict nigga. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be strict. Yeah, I was trying yeah. to catch him slipping. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to catch him slipping. Okay, we're going to get into the first topic. Go ahead, Dre. So for the first topic, because you, and that's crazy because you kind of already brought your mom up a little bit, but we wanted to talk about like black men and the dynamic that they have with their mothers. Okay. Because... Sometimes I was having a conversation with somebody the other day and they were basically telling me like if they mom don't like somebody that they're dating, they'll stop dating her. Bro. Like for no other reason but just that his mom doesn't like her. Mm-hmm. And so it just made me think about, I don't know if you've seen the movie uh, Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man, the Steve Harvey movie. It came nah, out like nope. seven, eight years ago. I've never seen that. But um, Terrence J had a character on a movie and like he started dating a new woman and his mom just used to give the woman a hard time. Mm-hmm. And him and his mom had like a, a very close relationship. So mm-hmm. it was like he needed the approval of his yeah. mom to like really take the woman seriously and stuff. And I've seen a lot of situations like that in real life. Mm-hmm. So I kind of just wanted to talk about that because I think sometimes it's almost detrimental to the relationship. Mm. 
between the woman and the man because yeah. of the relationship that he has with his mother. Yeah. So, like, how is the relationship with you and your mom? My mom is my nigga. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's my dog. Um, but, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I think in those situations, like, moms just have a way of working. They, they, yeah. You know I mean? they, they always win in that situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I give it to my mom because she grew so much, man. Like, really? She was not that mom, but I think that's typical of a mother to be protective. Right. And to know what's best for their child and mm-hmm. to try to guide them and to help them not make those mistakes. Right. And that's what I learned through my relationship with my mom is like when she was a little overbearing or anything like mm-hmm. that, it was just trying to help me not make mistakes. Anymore. Right. But then she learned, like, this nigga going to do whatever the fuck he wanted. Yeah. <laughs> so I might as well be his friend. Right. And help, and just be there when the nigga need me mm-hmm. rather than trying to dictate everything. And I think that's the dynamic between, like, black moms and their kids where when you reach that point, you just get past all of that shit. Because when we're younger, we're I'm her baby. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? If you I'm, actually really need Yeah, that. so it's like, if I'm crying, like, oh, what, what y'all do to my baby? Right. You know what I mean? And it's still like that as a grown man. Like, anybody can get it. <laughs> yeah. So it's hard, it's hard for her to turn that off. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, black moms, that that you can't tell them to turn that off. You can't be like, yo, chill, mom, or relax, mom. Yeah. You know what I mean? They learn to just trust and, you know what I mean, kind of go through your, your journey with you. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And one thing me and Dre love to do is budget and save money. So Mm -hmm. we're going to tell y'all how rocketmoney.com is going to save you some money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. Yes, y'all. I love me some Rocket Money because I be forgetting about subscriptions that I have on my phone and money just be coming out, coming out of my account and I be forgetting about it. So what I love about Rocket Money is that you, all you have to do is with a tap can cancel everything. Yes, and you know they make it hard to cancel subscriptions now. Yeah. You can't find the little button. You can't find this, find that. Or they want you to call customer service. Yeah. And now you ain't even got to worry about being on the phone with customer service for an hour just to cancel a $19.99 app. Yeah, Rocket Money going to handle all Mm -hmm. of that stuff for you. It can save you up to $720 per year. A lot Mm -hmm. of people be saving a lot of money. So what you're going to do is go to rocketmoney.com backslash poor minds. That's rocketmoney.com backslash poor minds. Poor minds and cancel those unwanted subscriptions. Period. Stop wasting your money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash poor minds. That's rocketmoney.com slash poor minds. Rocketmoney.com slash poor minds. But do you have the type of mom that's like she don't make you hold accountability for your actions. Because sometimes you have the like mom. She's going to have your side no matter what. She's going to have your side no matter what. And you know your son doing wrong. You know he's doing some messed up stuff. And you still be like. That's bullshit. My mom be trying to get everybody on her team against me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. She be like, he's an asshole. He's a... But I'm her baby, though. Right, like, You right. know what I'm saying? But she don't but, mind telling you about yourself. Oh, hell no. Nah. Okay. She's she going to make sure she tell me about myself. And she's going to make sure that. She just do the best. Mm-hmm. Huh? Yeah. And it's not really about what I want or what I want to make sure. It's like she she knows what she got in mind and she knows what's best. Right. So if it takes her saying some shit or doing some shit, it is what it is. Like I think that's where I got my outspokenness from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is like just being able to confidently, you know, tell somebody when they're right or wrong. Right. And me and my mom, we definitely have those difficult conversations. Mm. You know what I mean? But that's why I say she's my nigga because we could talk about that shit and it won't really like affect the relationship. Affect anything. Yeah. So do you date somebody like I, Cause I know she's probably you probably dated somebody that she didn't like. For sure. So how did you navigate that? Was it like, okay, I can't really date you because my mom don't like you, or was it just kind of like mama, I'm gonna do what I want to do? Um for me it was difficult because it was like I was in my twenties. Yeah. And when you when you're in your twenties, how old are y'all? Thirty four. I'm thirty two. Yeah, I'm thirty six. I'll be thirty seven this year. So when y'all know when you're mm-hmm. in your twenties, you feel like you know shit that you did not yes. fucking know. Facts. So a lot of the things that I was like combating with her, mm-hmm. I feel like it was just me being in my twenties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like me knowing what I know now, like we would have been able to get through that shit smoothly. Mm-hmm. But it's like anything that was difficult. Whether it was like in the relationship with the woman I was with or her, I wasn't 
I don't think I was capable of navigating that shit in my 20s. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. So now that you're about to be 37, do you mm -hmm. still, does she still like give you advice when you're dating or when you bring somebody home? Because you're in a relationship, right? Yeah, yeah. So like when you met her, when she met your mom, mm -hmm. how was that? Like, did they get along or was she kind of like iffy at first? My mom is the type, she's going to put you through like all of the tests. Yeah. And she's going to like see how you take care of me. She's mm -hmm. going to see if you can clean. She's going to see if you can cook. She's gonna talk about your food. Gonna... Oh, she you gotta cook for her? I mean, she she's just gonna make sure that you're cooking for me. Yeah. Oh no, it's all, everybody's strict. Be strict hereditary over there. <laughs> he she's got gonna, it honestly. Yeah, she, she, she's gonna talk about, you know, she's gonna she's gonna make sure that you're taking care of me. And if you ain't taking care, care of yeah, you ain't taking care of me the right way. She's gonna yeah. be honest. Before she would just dog you, and that would be that. But now she kinda Nurtures you, yeah. Helps you get through it. Like, come on, baby. Like, you know. Not you got to go through training. Oh, for sure. I mean, but some uh, girls, oh, yeah. Some girls, we need. I mean, you right? Yeah. Though. I mean, it's coming from a woman, so it's it's <laughs> genuine. It's not a man trying to tell you. Right, how to right. Work up. <laughs> and it's from somebody who took care of me already. Right, right. She know, you know what I'm saying. It's like, look, nigga, this. That's how you take care of that nigga. I know, that's right. She yeah. got to clock in. I think it's positives and negatives, though, because I definitely think that's a positive aspect of it. Like, I always have said I want to be with a man that has a really good relationship with his mother mm -hmm. because I feel like the way a man treats his mother is a good indication of how he's going to treat you. Yeah, but true. then sometimes, like, in instances where, like, guys grew up with, like, single moms, mm -hmm. I think they almost kind of have this, like, allegiance. Mm. to their mom yeah. like to where it becomes like an unhealthy thing because it's like you have to get her approval for everything because it was just y'all two growing up it's right? there, it's and there. you know a lot of the time that like you're all she had yeah you know? I've been paying bills in my house since I was 16 years old mm -hmm. my mom ain't worked since 2008 mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and I graduated in 06 mm -hmm. that's so, crazy yeah my mom ain't have to work so do you ever feel like that's sometimes maybe what can affect the the parent not liking the new woman coming into the situation that is gonna like Af threaten that affect yeah. like the relationship that y'all I think have. it's more the loyalty on our end uh -huh. because that's that's the first person that we know how to take care of mm -hmm. right so it's like we could get another girl I think mm. get another mom that's mm. yeah, that's <laughs> straight up that's lit yeah, that she yeah. hasn't worked since two thousand eight mm -hmm. yeah, yeah my mama gave birth to some bullshit. <laughs> Girl, she was working. <laughs> she was fucking working. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she said, she... <laughs> okay. I told y'all it. it's that drink. It's that open smoke. <laughs> Sheesh. But no, I, I agree with Dre. I do think it's like, and that could be like a bonding thing. Yeah. And so, and so like, even from, from my perspective, I could tell when a woman, when her daddy a real nigga. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, I like that. Like, yeah, I like yeah. a woman who knows how to deal with a solid nigga. You mm -hmm. can tell if she was raised or she got some brothers or something like yep, that. Yeah, yeah. But she ain't no punk ass. Like, you know what I mean? A little female. <laughs> like, she know how to talk to a nigga. She know right. how to treat a nigga. Right. And you be like, oh, your daddy a real nigga. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's a that's a, that's a a green flag for sure. You definitely know for sure. Because I definitely have had guys that I've dated tell me, like, I know you I know you and your dad had a type oh, relationship. Oh, for sure. You, you can tell. You can tell just yeah. by how you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. like, your daddy a real nigga. That's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I, But I think that's why the, the family dynamic is very, very important. And we mm -hmm. need to get back to that. Even if you're like co-parenting and stuff, like it's mm -hmm. good to have your child seeing, you know, their parents getting along yeah. and having a healthy relationship. 100%. Mm -hmm. Like that's very, very important to me, I think. You know? I think so too. Oh, right. Because, you know, kids, I feel like a lot of times too, we say this all the time, it's better to be apart than together if y'all are arguing all the time. That's not a good environment for them to be in. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. But, you know, I have always talked about, too, I've seen the other side of, like, your mama not liking your girl. And, like, with my parents, it worked out. My mama beat my granny up, and they stayed together. Not true love. <laughs> 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 but in my mama defense, though. <laughs> my granny <laughs> Uh -huh. My granny swung first. <laughs> My granny swung first. There, there. Yeah. There, there. I like your family. <laughs> It gets to, crazy my over there. Food. First, mama was like, I, I come over there for Thanksgiving. Oh my god! Want. When I tell you, Dreya has the actually the craziest like family tree ever. Yeah, I do. It's, crazy. it's so crazy. Okay, but yeah. we gonna switch gears for a second too. So, um, I wanted 
to, because we talked about this a little bit earlier as far as like having a type, you know, dating a woman in the industry versus mm -hmm. dating a regular person. But I wanted to talk about having a type, mm -hmm. period. Because I know people, they talk about you a lot and your type. <laughs> they do. Okay. They be like, Wiz got a certain type. He likes a certain type of woman that look like X, Y, Z. Like okay? what? They always say like you tend to like, like petite, light skinned girls or something. Okay. Right? Okay. Which I don't think is a problem because I feel like when I say I like dark skinned men, nobody got, when women say that in general, oh, like, right. oh, I like tall, dark Never skinned men, it's not it an like issue. That. A preference yeah. is a preference. A preference is, I I, uh, I yeah. think that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like when I be like, I want my nigga to have a full hairline. Mm -hmm. and, you know, shit, <laughs> Satan. <laughs> I'm receiving. I want my nigga to have a side tooth. I get it. Yes. So I, I want to talk about having a type. Now, do you have a type? Um, you ain't got the lacry. I'm trying to think about what my type would be if I was to like narrow it down. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I don't think I have a type. I think I just like real pretty, pretty women. Like, okay, yeah. it doesn't matter the color. It don't matter the, if you're tall, if you're short. I definitely like, like if more like, I don't know if it's if it would be considered like. Taller features mm -hmm. because even some shorter girls they have like long necks or mm. like you know like, not a long neck but I'm a tall but I'm a tall dude <laughs> You're so wild. I do a I long do, like, neck is crazy <laughs> you be like oh her neck nice yeah, yeah I look at shit like that I look at all that uh -huh. I like really pretty women like you okay. know what I mean like the, it's just like the silhouette or you know and then it's the personality as well mm -hmm. I grew up dating all types of women and I've. I get love from all types of women. Yeah. I never really dated any white girls because I'm like, really? Yeah, nah, hell nah. Because the babies like, ain't got no chance. It's not that they don't have a chance. It's like I'm a real nigga, so yeah, it, it only right. goes but so far. Mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? You so, get some points for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It only goes but so far. Okay. But um, yeah, pretty much like all of the women that I dated, like we just be, gotta be able to laugh. Like, yeah. We have mm -hmm. Conversation. We watch the same movies. We listen to the same music. Or you could not even know the shit, the shit that I know and I put you on. But it doesn't matter about color. Like, I love black women. Mm -hmm. I dated a lot of black women. Um, just by based off of the way that I talk and the way that I act, mm -hmm. I always got teased when I was growing up because it's like, you know, niggas is playing basketball, niggas is selling dope, and I, I don't look like that and I don't yeah. talk like that. Mm -hmm. But it's like, that never made me have no complex or nothing like that. Right. It just made me learn how to talk to black women. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But that's a good point, too, because I feel like a lot of times when guys are like, especially black men, when they're they're nerds or whatever, yeah. they're not into things, they're like, well, I don't talk to black women because they don't nah, like me. Nah, it's not like that. I, I don't feel like... They like me or dislike me. It's mm -hmm. People choose what they want to choose. Right. And I'm a lot. I'm really complex. So it might take you your whole life to realize you like a nigga like me. That's mm -hmm. cool. In high school, you teased me. It is what it is. I like rough chicks. I like chicks who talk shit. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I don't want no punk ass chick. Right. So like, I don't run away from that. You know what I mean? I like a little little back and forth. You know what I mean? That shit yeah. fun. Sometimes. Oh, that makes sense. That and shit fun sometimes. It is. That that definitely is fun. I, I be feeling like it's bullshit, though, when people say, like, oh, this person don't like me. Yeah. You just going after people that don't like you. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I feel like, like, like you liking bitches that don't like you, I and that's like, the problem. I feel like everybody want me. I know that's but, right. <laughs> Same. That's but, crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's Where like, have you been? No, for real. <laughs> it don't matter. It could be an old lady. I feel like she want me. Yeah, the old lady. Yeah, no, nah, for real. But I, I mean, and I she can get, get that some though. too. Because even if you're <laughs> not you don't discriminate. Not you be at the nursing home cutting up. <laughs> old ladies love me. Mm. But I do let me feel find out like you carry that KY. <laughs> <your body. laughs> mm -hmm. But I do feel like too. It's kind of like. When I see somebody or like if I'm talking to somebody and they be like, oh girl, or if you bring up a nigga to somebody, right. I know it's probably happening, you be like, oh girl, he don't like black girls. I don't know what you talking about. Yeah. He not like you. No, I agree. You know, I've never been that type of person to where me it's either. like, oh, or if you tell me the women that you used to date and none of them look like me, like that don't bother me. Mm -hmm. Like, cause sometimes you meet somebody and y'all just hit it off and they may, you may not be their type physically what they traditionally date. Yeah. But I think dating people goes beyond, you know, the physical, obviously. Mm -hmm. So it's like sometimes you date people and it's like they can be fine, look attractive, but it may not be your type, but you enjoy that person. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Because types are just, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, types are cool. You know what I mean? Of course, you want to be with somebody who's physically attractive. Right. And you don't want to, like, let that have to grow on you. But some people do. You know what I mean? I just, I'm not that type of person. You got to look. Fine from the, 
You can't, you, so you wouldn't be like, okay, you know, her personality makes her pretty. We could be friends. Um, we. Yeah. <laughs> but I think men are more <laughs> wired that way. Like, y'all have to have the physical attraction. Like, y'all have to be attracted to the woman that y'all date. And it's the same thing with women, though. A woman don't want to be with a man that but can provide. And it's, yeah, exactly. Oh. And it's, I, mean, I, it's I thought same. you was going to say something else. I thought I was going to say ugly. I was about to say. I, no, I, women I, date ugly niggas, ugly rich niggas all the time. It's, it's, it's whatever <laughs> you're into. Like, I like weird looking chick sometimes you could be like a, a six with personality mm. i'd be like fuck it you can have a gap you can have freckles like mm -hmm. fuck it like i like that shit sometimes. yeah mm -hmm. i like unique looking people it doesn't have to be the typical prettiest person in the right. I didn't always get the popular girl or the pretty mm -hmm. girl you know what i mean well i did but it wasn't it wasn't what i was trying to do all the time mm -hmm. right it was like <laughs> an accident yeah. yeah i mean they always come around but at the end of the day it's whatever you're into. Some girls think that they're supposed to like like the most, you know, physically attractive thing. Some some girls like a little pudgy nigga, like you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying. They like a little, you know, a little buzz, a little, and, little buzz. And I, I grew up skinny, so it was like, you know, some girls like skinny niggas. They might mm -hmm. want to be seen with a buff nigga, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what looks good. Or Not looks you was right. behind closed doors knocking them down. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I do feel like if. I'm a six, and you feel like, which I'm not, I'm not talking about me because can't relate. But yeah. if you're a six with a nice personality, I don't want to know that you think I'm a six. That's what I was going to say. Like, I wouldn't want a nigga to be like, oh, I mean, you a six, but you a Like, you, it, I can work with that. If I'm kind of <laughs> ugly, I want to know. I don't want to know. I want to know. But you know what? I want to know that you fuck with me because I'm a little ugly. No. <laughs> like, no. just let it be known. Like, <laughs> really, people. No, why would you confirm me? <laughs> right. Confirming it is fucked up. That's what I'm saying. Because, But you know what? I do. We should be able to have that conversation. Mm -mm. But you know. If you ugly, you know. <laughs> Let me... I should be able to say we shouldn't be tap dancing around it. But I, I feel like if I my man like... is ugly, he would never know. Because I'm making make him feel like the finest thing in the world. No, he knows. No, nah, because he's going to know you're trying to play him by no, calling uh, him fine. My, gonna right, be like, my just, ex, just, just the thick stand. one. I used to make him feel like he was fucking... Idris. You just he called him thick. He was thick he as fuck. Well. Did you ever call him thick to him? Not to his face, That's but when what... thick would come on by uh thick. When it would come on, I would side eye him and see if he was twerking. That should have been y'all jam. It, it was. was my jam. <laughs> but I don't start shaking that little leg. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I just feel like <laughs> I think he knew he was ugly. I just no, he didn't. He was, okay, I swear to God, he did. I think people be lying and you be believing them because, like, he knew. Ain't no way he didn't know. It's no <laughs> way, y'all. I'm silly, y'all. He, he didn't had to know. He uh, the way I'm explaining it to you now, you know. So he had to know. <laughs> Trust me, he knew. But I feel like even if you do know, I'm not gonna make you feel that way because in my eyes, you really not ugly to me. Yeah. I don't need nobody to else you. to find my. To me, you fine as hell. You my nigga. I love you, boo. For, unfortunately, it's billions of people in the world <laughs> like you in person. But you would want to know if somebody doesn't find you that attractive, but they like you. And they fuck with you, but they're like, mm, you're you're all right. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, but what if they would you keep fucking with them? That's the real yeah. question. After they told you that, would you keep talking to them? Yeah, I'd be like, my bitch don't even like cute <laughs> niggas. <laughs> Pretty ass nigga. She want an ugly nigga. <laughs> that is crazy. Now he's gonna fit it into a compliment. You know what I mean? I am so weak. I am weak. Dre, have you ever like told a man I, he was unattractive though? Cause you done dated some ugly niggas. That's why I thought you was about to ask me, have I dated an ugly <laughs> nigga? I was like, bitch, you know that you <laughs> Um, no, I've never told a nigga he was ugly. I just feel like that's so hard. That's so you hard. You probably told him when you got mad. But I'ma tell you why I never told a nigga he was ugly. Cause I know you know. You nigga, you know you ugly. Oh I don't gotta God. say that to you. It's so many other things I could say in an argument. Have you ever told a woman that you liked her, but she was like, you ain't that bad, but I love you. <laughs> you like, ain't even that bad. You ain't never said it. Ah, uh, nah. I don't, I don't even think you ain't even that bad is like the way to to, to say it. I think it's like a cooler way to say it. Like, 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 how would you say that though? Like, you look a little weird sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but I love oh you. My God. I ain't gonna lie. I it would hurt you. a little more. I'd I be like, you. why? You ain't never gonna see me again. Yeah. Mm -mm. I'm not yeah. talking to you no more. I love your little weird ass. No. See, I and that's my problem. Like, I think I'm the baddest thing walking. So if a man tells me anything, if you feel anything outside of that, it's really? not gonna work. Yeah. Like I need you to be like 
can't keep your hands off of me. Like, that's the type of men I like today. Like, yeah. you cannot keep your hands off of me. If you think I'm a little weird looking, I'm going to hit an angle. You're going to be like, oh. That's you real love saying? right there because yeah. I'm still going to fuck with you and I'm still going to treat you like, you know, whatever the baddest uh, standard is. You just not that. You're mm-hmm. acting. That's not acting. That's me being happy with what I chose. <laughs> Like, Cause I'm choosing to be with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, why would I be upset with what I chose? Huh, it like, was my decision. Yeah, I'm not. But I'm with your weird ass. You know what I mean? I choose it every day. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not telling somebody that they they. I'm letting. You would never tell somebody they nope. ugly. No, I would never tell my man he ugly. I mean, my man now not ugly, but I would even if I did think he was ugly. Y'all, I could be lying right now. Y'all don't know. You never told a nigga you lucky. I tell every nigga they lucky. That's basically your ugly. <laughs> the fuck. What? What's basically your ugly? You lucky. That's what I'm saying. This it's the same thing. That's, That's why I ask. No, it's not because a fine nigga is still lucky. Like, have you seen me? But you're like, not gonna tell a fine nigga that. Yes, I would. You remember my ex? The one I dated last year? Fine as hell. Beautiful man. That nigga lucky as fuck. You walking around with me? <laughs> Never seen a nigga badder than me. Well. A nigga. Some niggas be bad. <laughs> Boris Cujo is a baddie. <laughs> That's a bad nigga. Idris Elba, that's a that's bad. A baddie. Sometimes niggas be like, niggas. that's a badass nigga. Niggas be, yeah, niggas I mean, be knowing they I bad. I can be a bad nigga. I done seen you dress up before and you was like, I know, like, you oh, was like, that's a bad That's what I'm saying. I I'm, done one, seen I'm one of them ones. He's yeah, one of the baddies. He's a whizzy the baddie. Yeah, I got that thing where when I walk in, you just feel me. Right. Baddie. There's a lot of people who don't even know, but when they see me, they be like, God. Damn. Yeah. That's baddie behavior. For sure, 100%. I'm one of them ones. But I be chilling, you know what I mean? I just, <laughs> I like to do mine in person. <laughs> <laughs> I like to like pull up. You play the long game with women. Yeah. Like, you, if like a girl meets you and she necessarily don't like you like that, but you like her, you be like, all right, I'm going to get you. Yeah. Like, I don't, it's not, may, it may not be today, tomorrow. It could be three years from now, but I'm going to get your ass. I feel like mm-hmm. as soon as I start talking to women, they, that's when it happens. Yeah. And then for me, I don't like to rush shit. So I could be your friend for fucking years. Before, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? All of that crazy shit. See, that's why I don't like that. Because patient niggas are dangerous. What you mean? They are. Because a patient and man. And a nigga with a mouthpiece, too. Because yo, yes. cause your mouthpiece can make you even more attractive. Like, even if a nigga is like a six, yeah. his mouthpiece can make him like a nine yeah. easily. 100%. Every time. And a patient man... He gonna be patient. He gonna be patient. Then you finally get him a chance, and then that nigga gonna throw you for a whirlwind. Yep. Every time. That's yep. why. Ooh, Lord. Oh, you mean like they be waiting on a moment? Yeah, like if yeah. he try to holler at you, and you know he like you, but you like really ain't pay- paying him no yeah. mind. One day you might be like, you know what? Let me just see what he's talking about. Like, you know, he been consistent texting me every now and then, checking up on me. I know he want me, and then you end up, you know, going on a date, and you like, damn, this nigga actually cool. Three months later, you at this nigga doorstep crying. Oh, you saying they be flipping the script? They flip the script every time. Oh, okay. Not they, every they time. They ready to break you down. Not every time. I always have good intentions. <laughs> Look at that smile. He exactly. always have good intentions. This is always good. I'm I, I see right through that. Okay, but let me ask you a question before we get to the bed. I do got a little quick question. All right. Do you get mad when, like, a woman that you have met or maybe a woman you have relations with, like, she sees like you on a blog or sees something about about you somewhere and she's like in the comments calling you by your real name. Like, oh my God, Wistopher, you so cool. <laughs> Wistopher. <laughs> my name's Cameron. I know that. Oh okay. Cameron. <laughs> I think I'll, I think Wistopher is it now. <laughs> well I'm saying like, <laughs> like Loki. Wistopher, you so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, does that, like, bother you? Like, if you nah. see that in the comments, like, them trying to call you by your first name? Your I real like name. my real name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you like that? You be like, ha, girl, quit playing. Uh, ha, ha. Call me Cam. Oh, no, that's right. Hey. See? He is nothing but trouble. <laughs> nothing but trouble. What if somebody called you Tierra in the comments? They do. They do. But you always be like, you Don't call, call me, me that whole ass nigga. She be getting mad. I do get mad because it's kind of like, you know what, with Carisha, because like, Carisha, please. Yeah. And she kind of ha- just had to go with it. Y'all not doing that to me. Mm. Y'all is not doing that to me. I don't, and not that I don't like it, but I feel like that's when my family calls me. Yeah. Like, that's something that, like, people who really knew me know. And I feel like that 
that's what helps me, like, not helps me, but it's like this lifestyle of being in the public and then having a private life, I feel like that's what helps me separate stuff mm. too. Mm. You know? You want to be one thing at work and you want to be Yes, like when I somebody feel. comments and says, oh my God, Tierra, I'm so proud of you. I'm like, man, this is somebody from Orange. Yeah. And then I go to their page, I'm like, man, this is my friend from third grade. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's more of like, it's a little more personal for yeah. me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Versus, you know, somebody like, oh my God, Wistopher, they trying to get some dick. <laughs> you think so? If they calling you Wistopher, like, they... They want that thing. They seen you kickboxing, lifting that I'm leg. They might like, they might like my workout video. They, I know, yeah, I know, I know that's I right. Inspired them to get up and get mm -hmm. to the gym. You be cutting up, Christopher. Oh, for real. <laughs> so now it's time to <laughs> get <laughs> into, into the bed. Ow. Oh, the bed. Bow. Oh. The bed. Bow. 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 Uh, bow. 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 So go ahead, Dre. Okay, so for the bed topic this week, we want to play a little game. Mm -hmm. A little game called This or That. All right. So we want to see which one you prefer. We're okay. going to ask you a couple questions. All right, for sure. So, ass or titties? Ass. Ass, why? Um, I just, I think, like, the way that it's, when it, the shape, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. If it just stops here, uh, instead of... Going down there just a little bit, and it don't got to be like a real big ass. Mm -hmm. It just got to be a nice shape, shape, tone, real or fake. But I'm definitely more. Not you don't discriminate. More yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm more, I'm more, into, more into ass. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I feel you on that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, giving head or receiving head. Um, I'm a receiver. I figured okay. that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, I like to catch mines. Lights on or off? On. I like the lights. He answered too. that quick. Yeah, I like the on. I like okay. daytime sex. I'm a nighttime person. I want the lights on, but I feel like it's more romantic. Y'all know I'm old. I like to make sweet, sweet love. It's romantic. Even like a little candle or something. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah like I mean, I like the lights on, but I like, like to on be set at it night. off. I'm finna put this moo moo on and seduce your ass. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I, I got that moo moo pussy. <laughs> That's that old auntie pussy. Yeah, well, lights on. Okay. I want to see the moo moo. Me too. Okay. I like the moo moo. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In the bedroom or out of the bedroom? Both. Both. What's the craziest place you had sex? Um, let me think. I got to think hard. Like at an award show, y'all snuck into the bathroom or at a party or something? See, I don't want to give away anybody's business, so. Okay. Just, you know. It's been some times. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Planned or spontaneous? Uh, spot. Well, I think there's shit. I don't want to be boring, but there's like good to both. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. when you plan it, you got that anticipation. Like you yeah. might be in the club, you might have to like tell her like, look, when we get out of here, it's fucking going down. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. that. That's that's a good point. Yeah, or it could be spontaneous. Like y'all could be like fucking, you know, at like a. You know, like you said, a little function or a party. I might blend off to a bathroom somewhere, mm -hmm. cracking, like, you know what I mean? I like that. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes I feel like with playing sex, too, like, I like that as far as, like, oh, when we get home or, yeah. oh, when I get back in town, yeah. stuff like that. Like I don't, setting the mood. Yeah, mm -hmm. set the mood. Yeah, I don't want I like it to that. be like, uh, yeah, when I get home, make sure you X, Y, Z. Like, no, make sure I'm warmed up and ready. Yeah, no, it's like, look, you, you ready? Like, because when I'm coming in, I'm... I'm I'm coming home. I know right. that, right? <laughs> Cause sometimes sure. plans can get boring. Cause I feel like you know you hear stories about couples where it's like they've been together yeah. for X amount of time, and then it's like okay, we gonna have sex on Wednesday night at six thirty every week. Yeah, oh. no. Nah. I don't want it like nah, that. You still gotta, y'all still gotta be like dating each other. Like yeah. you go out, and have a nice night, get a little tipsy, or yeah. You know, watch a movie, end mm -hmm. up in a jacuzzi, like you know what I'm saying. You be setting the vibe. I do. I know that's right. I'm one of them. Okay, um, sativa or indica? There's no Sex. difference like between sativa or indica. I didn't know that. Yeah. You learned something. Then you gotta school us. We be yeah. thinking it's the difference. So is there like a certain weed you like to smoke before you? I, I, oh, before I, but what well, weed in general? Like when you smoke pot, that shit it definitely like boosts it. Mm -hmm. so, a little two puffs in the morning might send you right back to bed. I know that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Show, sure. but um. Yeah, I think I think my kush is the best. Okay. Yeah. You like that? So, do you have to? Does your partner have to smoke? Like, what? Can you date somebody that doesn't smoke? I usually I I usually end up getting them to smoke. 
Okay. okay. Yeah. Even if they don't smoke, they end up trying it. Okay. okay. And they okay. end up kind of like it. Oh, yeah. They it. like it. They love it. No, uh -huh. mm hmm Clothes. Okay. Oh, go ahead. So, clothes are fully naked. Like, do you like to pull it to the side or you just got to take them off? I like to, I like to pull it to the side because I like the sneaky, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Little sneaky freak. <laughs> It feels dangerous, you know what I'm saying? Like you're saying? not supposed to be yeah, doing this. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, but I like clothes off sometimes too. Mm -hmm. Get out the shower, you know what I mean? Nice and clean, put that oil on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep, I want I want that all over me. You be looking in the mirror at yourself? Who, me? You give Hell up. yeah. I knew it. Hell I yeah. Hell. Hell I yeah. know you be looking in the mirror. Hell yeah. I know that's right. Flexing. Are you a cold or naked? Hey, you cursed the Dre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Been to spit. Hey, hey. <laughs> Am I a clothed or naked person? Yeah. I like both. I okay. think it just depends. Like, cause sometimes it's like, you know, I done had sex in places I wasn't supposed to be having it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, obviously, then you just gotta pull it to the side. Mm -hmm. But then right. I agree. Like when you at home and you just get out the shower and you all oiled up and you put mm -hmm. your perfume on, you know. Yeah, that's a vibe. vibe. Mm -hmm. A big, big vibe. Okay. Vanilla or freaky sex? Freaky sex. Freaky sex? Yeah. Hmm. Not too freaky, though. Yeah, that's how I, I like vanilla sex. I'm very like, I don't need all that extra stuff. Mm -hmm. I like I don't. That. I don't be doing like the toys and all of that shit. Okay. But definitely like, I would say passionate. Okay. okay. Yeah, not, that makes sense. not vanilla, but right, passionate. Right, right. Like, Kissing, fucking biting, scratching, Ooh. rolling around. We getting to it. Whistopher. Yeah, yep, sure. I know that's all right. Yeah, yep. Dre, are you a vanilla? You give me sometimes. And I think it depends what mood you in. Yeah, I'm a little bit of both. But I feel like what do you consider freaky, though? Like, what's too freaky for y'all? Mm. I think when you start using toy, it depends on who you're talking to. Because some people are like, like, shout out to Horrible Decisions. Like, the stuff that they do... It's too freaky it's for you. It's too freaky for me. I agree. And they, the stuff that they be calling vanilla, I'm like, this is really, really freaky. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm not doing, like, no orgy parties. Mm -hmm. I went to a sex resort before. I'm not doing that again. It's not really something that, you know, sparked Tickles my... your fans. It did not tickle my cootie cat not mm -hmm. one time. I was watching, but I'm like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Clutching my pearls. But um, I like to use toys in the bedroom. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, But I don't know if that's considered freaky. It may be considered freaky to some people. Right. It may be vanilla to some people. But I think toys is kind of like... I think toys are a little freaky. Yeah, Especially but that's where... Like the nigga using it. Yeah. If the nigga wants to use it, he's right. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Like if he introduces it. Yeah. Or are you saying if he just okay with if it? He's, if he introduces it, just from a nigga perspective, mm -hmm. that's a freak. <laughs> that's yeah, a, I'm yeah. not going to lie. But if Shorty want to get down, like, all right, cool. I'm not yeah. going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's cool. Like, I'm not... I'm not going to lie. I had a nigga, like, pull out a toy one time. I'm like, you is a freaky yeah, ass yeah, nigga. Yeah, that's, that's wild. You was a freaky frog. <laughs> Did you keep fucking with him? Hell yeah. yeah. Did he have, like, a drawer? And it wasn't a drawer, but he definitely had things. Like, I told, I think I talked about this. He, like, tied me up. He had the whole contraption. Uh -huh. Like, I was tied up. He blindfolded. Ah. <laughs> it was... She over there talking about... Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like that. Yeah. But, yeah, it was definitely... <laughs> But as we started dating and get to know each other, I realized, like, you are a freaky nigga. But he never took it too far. Like, it was always things I was comfortable with. But he would definitely be trying to, like, push it. You know what What's I'm saying? What's too freaky for you, though, Wiz? Because, like, what if you went to a girl house and she had a sex room? I'm with that. You with that? Yeah, I'm cool with the sex room. Because that's, like, I mean, too freaky for me is, is like, is, is not normal. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, give me an example. <laughs> like, I think... Okay, go ahead. I'm going to let you go. Go ahead. Not, nor not, normal. not normal. Well, there is no not normal these days. Yeah. I ain't even going to lie. There is, everybody, yeah. be going, everybody does everything mm -hmm. these days. I feel like uh, something like not normal to me is like like we talked about before. Like sometimes fetishes can get a little weird. Like I'm not dressing up in no diaper or I'm not dressing up in no animal outfit. Like, I'm not doing all something, like, weird. Like, I'll do some role play. Mm -hmm. Like, we act like we don't know each other or we just met in a bar. Like, I'll do something like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm not dressing up as, like, no character or doing something weird. Like, I seen a lady tell a story one time when she was, like, she was dating a white man. And he was like, I want to pretend like I'm the slave master. Damn. Okay, I don't little... like no whips and chains and you can't not. That's what it was giving. That's a little too real for me, though. That's <laughs> like, that's a little too real. Okay? But I'm saying, that's what somebody... Be, you want me to be a slave? <laughs> that's what slave. I'm saying. 
like stuff <laughs> like that is when it got on like Too that. freaky. Because we ain't that far removed from that if you really think about it. It's only been like a hundred years. Oh I don't God. like this. Yeah. Absolutely not. But you wouldn't put on a little cat outfit and be like, mm, and like lick your paw. <laughs> That's not too freaky. That's kind of. I right. think that's kind of. You know, that's just, I, I give you a little. Down give you that. a little bowl of milk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A bowl of milk. Put a little yeah. crawler on. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm not. You would it. What if it was a bowl? I'm starting. Of to, I'm starting to feel like we we might not be as vanilla as we thought we were. No, we we. Yeah, <laughs> right. Now she said if it was a bowl of Tito's. A bowl of Tito's though. Of I might Tito's. I might get on all fours for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay, okay. So we got one more. We got one more. Music or no music. Music. Okay. Yeah. I like you listen to yourself? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, that's yeah. right. When this song come on, I'm spending yeah, money. Yeah. Well, I got to yeah. test it out. You know what I mean? I gotta, yeah. Okay. I got to give it the... Set the vibe. Yeah. yeah. I got to give it the bedroom test. Like, can you fuck to this? Mm-hmm. You can smoke to it. You can ride to it. Can you fuck to it? Mm -hmm. That's a, the that's a vibe, though. Yeah. I feel like... People in their 30s, every time we talk to have guests in their 30s, mm -hmm. they always say music. When we have the younger guests, they be like, they no. Be like, nah. That is so weird. Like, the younger generations do not like having sex to music. They be that's trying weird. to get right to it. It is weird. That, that's because they don't have music to have sex to. Right. Nah, that's fair. We grew up on hella shit to, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, that when is you true. listen to it, you was like, yeah, this is, you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. time to knock some boots. Exactly. <laughs> they, don't have, they don't really have that. They ain't experienced that. They ain't put them two and two together. Yeah. yeah. For them. Yeah. I feel bad for them. I had just tweeted about this earlier. Like, Burna Boy had a concert out here in Atlanta not that long ago, mm -hmm. and he brought Tony Braxton out, and the kids was not screaming loud mm -hmm. enough. They for me. wasn't. Like, Do y'all not know who Tony is? She's bad as hell, too. Right. Beautiful. She looked OG. good. Yeah, she looks yeah. really good. And they just was not screaming loud enough for me. I'm like, but the kids don't be knowing. They don't mm -mm. be knowing who people are. Mm -mm. We knew. We grew up knowing who Garvin Gay was. Yeah, we, we were made to. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. We knew. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And even still listening to that shit now, like just smoking weed, vibing, listening to some mm -hmm. good ass music, like that really leads to a lot. It of, does. Yeah. But I also think like people don't know how to just chill and vibe either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you don't, if I'm chilling with my nigga, we necessarily don't have to be having a full blown conversation. Like sometimes we can just be sitting on the couch chilling. Yeah, for sure. Like just vibing and enjoying each other's company. Like we don't right. be having to have a full blown conversation. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I, I mean? value that a lot. Like I like to. If I'm with somebody or if I'm dating somebody, we got to have fun. Like, mm -hmm. It's not just about pulling up and fucking. Like, yeah. I mean, we're going to go bowling. We're going to mm -hmm. play pool. We're going to go to the movie. Yeah. We're going to, you know what I'm saying? I'm You're, you're going to teach me some shit that you like. Right. And I feel like that's way better of a connection because even if you don't end up with that person, you're going to learn from that person and whatever you take from that is just going to make you better in life. Right. And your expectations is going to be higher. You're going to be like, look, you don't... Come on now, you boring as hell. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. You gotta have more to offer than that. So, if I fuck with anybody, I definitely leave them with an right. impression. Yes, yeah, so bring the bar up. See, that's a problem too. Like, you what? probably got a bunch of exes that's like still in love with you and hoping that you'll come home. He strict. They know I ain't coming home. I'm a Virgo, so. Oh Lord, yeah. have oh, mercy. Yeah, sign. I'm a yeah. Taurus. Oh Lord, have mercy. Uh, mm -mm. <laughs> and she a Virgo. Too. Yeah, we don't we don't spend the block. <sighs> One thing about Earth signs, we do not <laughs> oh, fit in the block. We do not I forget I ever even knew your ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't post I'd be like, we dated? Yeah. Who are you? Where do I know like, you from? We Where lived together oh, Cameron. Five years ago. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Am I, I, with you? I don't really spend the <laughs> block. <laughs> yeah, I don't spend the block. I'm not going to lie. In my 20s, I was definitely open to spending the block. I think now it's like, I definitely feel like if we stop talking, we stop talking for a reason. But because I used to be a very, I was a toxic. No, girl. you was a spin the block ass. Spin the block because I used to love the, the just to know like yeah I can I can have this nigga if yeah. I want him. It was a young minded thing. But I think now it's just like hey if we stop talking that just means we're not meant to. Be, that's not our path. Yeah. So let's sometimes just move it don't work, work and I'm yeah. cool with it. I definitely leave an impression. It's like anybody that you fuck with afterwards, he's gonna have like a little complex. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Uh, so I make yeah. sure I do that on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Even if you know you know not gonna end up where. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because if you say my name, that nigga got to get irritated. Yeah. Oh, my God. But then he's going to end up being like, I fuck with that nigga. That's why it irritates me so much. But I feel like 
don't show me an amazing time if you know I'm not finna, we not finna end up together. But are we not? I feel like that's what dating is. Are we should have it. No, no, no. But I, I, I say, I say it like time. this. Don't be treating me like we're going to be together forever. Because I'm pretty sure people have, and I know this has happened to me. I've done this to people before. I treated a nigga like he was a king. He was my man. And like, you're not even boyfriend material, but this is just what's fun for right now. Mm. And I'm going to show you a good time. Sometimes it be like that. It do be like that. I'm the little summer fling. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it just makes sense for the time being. You gotta separate the two. Uh, see, that's when you I'm... live in your life, you just gotta like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm, yeah, yeah. a little bit, but sometimes I feel like don't be don't be making sweet, sweet love to me and then you leaving. Why I not? Oh, I like to have a ball. Like, I don't care if it's not gonna last forever. Show for me a good time. Yeah. I think I'm here for a good time, not a long time. For real. I think it's me being that person and being a lover girl. Like, cause in my twenties, I'll say like I broke a lot of hearts, and it was just like a lot. Like I. At this point, I like to be left alone. So sometimes it'd be like a lot of niggas straggling around and doing all that. It's like, hey, hey, it was what it was. That's why that nigga was like that. He didn't know he was ugly. You seem like he felt know. handsome for the first time in his life. You seem like no, you don't let your, your guard down. <laughs> when you do, you like somebody really got to take you serious and shit. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, it's like, you ain't going to be loving up on no nigga. You ain't going to be sending cute text messages. You ain't going to do none of that. But when you do... Yeah, it, that's how I am. It's got to be on a cracking like... Yeah, like... Yeah, that's scary. First of all, Wiz, no. No, 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 no. You no. sending them text messages, period. No, no, no. They call I, it love every three business days. Oh, that's cool. But what that's I'm cool. saying is... That's cool. They don't know the difference between my real love and like... Because I make people feel good. I'm a fire sign. Everybody... Literally, that's around me. They be like, damn, Lex really loved me. Did I? Or did I make you feel that way? So I think I I make people feel that way because I like the passion. Everything is passionate with me. Everything is dramatic with me. Everything is drama. But I I be knowing, like, I be knowing, like, this is it's not what it's given. But, you know, it's cool. But that's why I said I don't, I can dish it, but I can't take it. Because mm -hmm. I don't want somebody, don't be treating me like we about to get married and I really, really like you and it don't end up that way. Mm -hmm. That's when the problems start happening a little bit. But I'm definitely like, when I let that guard down, yeah. when I let when you let them floodgates yeah. open, mm -hmm. don't play with me. Don't play with me. <laughs> Hearts. That shit get real. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on. We got off topic. We got off topic. Okay, so now it's time to, to get, get into the bow. Ow. The bow. Bow. The bow. 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 Okay, so y'all know me. I love a good love song, but this is not R&B this week. I have a song. I think how you pronounce his name is Hozier. He has a song called Work Song. And it's like the song that everybody be like walking down the aisle to. You know, you have a cute little Valentine's Day set up. And it's like, I think he was really a poet before he started like making music. I don't know how true that is, but I think I just made that up in my head. But his music is literally poetry. I I told y'all I love a song that has great lyrics. So my bop of the week is Hozier Work Song. If you love good love songs, you gonna like that jam. What you been listening to, Drea? Okay, so I have a song. My song is called... Uh, do, first of all, do you have Friday on your playlist? Because I feel like that's somebody you would really I listen to. I won't waste no time. Yeah. We ate that up. Beautiful video. That is. It's a we great song. We met him. Remember we met, met him at the uh, Philly festival we did? He was like, hey, y'all them girls. We did meet him at uh, Roots Picnic. Yep, we all we them did. girls. <laughs> hold up, hold up. Sorry. <laughs> we them girls. Nah, for real. <laughs> that was a song. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a real. perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but what? Uh, <laughs> so Friday has a song, a new song called "Without You," and I really like it. Like, cause I really like his voice. Like to me, very he has unique. a very different and unique voice. Yes. And so this is like a very mellow song. So like, it's something I would just listen to like while I'm cleaning up the house, like mm. on a chill Sunday, a slow morning. Okay. But it's a good song. I really like it. Y'all should check it out. Okay. So what you been listening to is man. Oh fuck! I listen to old music. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I listen, to, I listen to like, I be listening to like, Cuban jazz and like African music. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I would have never. I didn't even know Cubans did jazz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I be listening to that type of shit. Yeah. So if you like get in the car and you gotta like make a a, a long drive, what album are you putting on? Equipment I. Okay. From Outkast. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, a throwback. That's yeah, a real throwback. Yeah. Did you listen to um the his flute album? 
I didn't. You did it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I haven't heard it either, but I do want to listen either. to it. Yeah. You said you did? No, I haven't, but I need to because gang, gang. Nah, for real. I used to play the flute. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. I was up your Facts. I was you going to be in there like. <laughs> yeah. Don't make, don't make me pull my shit out. Oh, my God. I'm going to look up the sheet music. She's going to be like. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear that? <laughs> no. And I used to be y'all laughing. I used to be kind of good. I was like sick of year. I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. Them I don't like the way everybody up in this bitch laughing out. It was a funny? good joke. It was a good joke. <laughs> <laughs> I was serious. <laughs> I, think you, I think you are a good flute player. It's, the, it's in the lips. Okay, okay. All right, so now we're going to get into our favorite <laughs> segment of the week. Pour your heart out. If you want your question answered on the show, make sure you email us at askpoorminds at gmail.com. If you're a Patreon member, make sure you just put that in the subject and you get to skip the line. Do you give good advice? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, okay. we about to, we about to see. Advice. All right. Oh, we only got one today? Okay, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll start with question number one. Oh, this is a long one. Okay, okay, question number one. So I have a dilemma and I'm feeling conflicted. I have a friend that I've been friends with for literally 20 years. It hasn't been the smoothest ride. We've had multiple extended periods of not speaking due to misunderstandings and lack of communication. But somehow we always get back on track. Even though I know no friendship is perfect, I'm starting to ask myself if we've just had growing pains that we've gotten over or if I only re-enter the friendship every time because she's my longest friend. I evaluate all my relationships recently and I asked myself if I met this person today would I be friends with them and for her the answer was no I've come to realize that this friend actually gets on my nerves mm. and doesn't really add value yeah. to my life. <laughs> Damn. Don't get me wrong. She's not a bad person at all, and she has great intentions, which is why I show her grace. But her mentality, attitude, and decision-making literally irritates me. Mm. I feel like I'm always having to be there for her because she always has drama going on, and being her soundboard is exhausting. Mm -hmm. Outside of the occasional link-up for drinks, I don't particularly enjoy being around her. Damn. I'm hesitant to cut her off because she's super sensitive, and I know she wouldn't take it well. Do y'all believe in cutting people off who don't necessarily do anything wrong, but they just don't serve a purpose anymore. I'm scared to hurt her feelings, but I'm over her. Damn. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. That was... Damn. I 100% support that. What the fuck? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. What I mean... Yeah. It's like you're unhappy. But that is crazy because she fed up with that bitch. You hate Super, that bitch. She <laughs> really knows. Like, she's got it down to a T. She's like, look, I only fuck with this bitch she's when not. I'm drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Lord knows sometimes. <laughs> and I really don't even like her then. You're like, fuck <laughs> this hoe. You ain't got shit to if talk you gotta, about. Yeah, if you got a Your drink, breath stink. Your hair nappy. You make she poor decisions. You ain't that cute. <laughs> you ain't that she cute. She said her decision making was bad. So... But I think we as people need to understand um, you change a lot. If you're a person that is um, spiritual, you know, you have a strong mentality and you're going to grow and change so much. Like, I'm not even the same person I was six months ago. I say this all the time. Right. So if you're constantly growing and you're, you're a person who enjoys growth, you have to surround your pe yourself with people like that. Mm -hmm. So me being somebody that grows a lot, I like to surround myself with people who grow a lot. So if I do see somebody and you kind of lack and slacking in the areas that I feel like you should be growing in, then I really kind of don't want you around. It ain't no bad blood, but if I'm going left and you going right, what do we have to talk about? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, cutting somebody off if, like, y'all aren't. Y'all don't have anything in common. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like it's cool to cut people off if they don't serve no purpose. Yeah. If, um, if, you're, if you don't align, and like you said, sometimes you be on a different wave when you get to a certain age. So shit that was cool before isn't cool anymore. Mm -hmm. A lot of people right. try to like live in the past and just keep redoing shit. And if you're, you know, one of those people who's moving forward and, you know, it's just all about being aware of what you want to do and who you want to be your friends. And if mm -hmm. you find yourself forcing somebody to be, I mean, forcing yourself to be somebody's friend as opposed to it working out for you, y'all having common interests, y'all glowing up together. Right. And you're just, you know, being your this person's friend just because you feel bad. Or, right. You know what I mean? Or you don't want to hurt their feelings and shit like that. You know, like, that's kind of their hold on you as mm -hmm. a friend. And they know they have that hold on you. They're like, right. they'll never let me go because they feel bad or they're always mm -hmm. going to, you know.
you know, want to do this for me or do that for me. So you just got to really be strong and like level up. And then that's when the shit around you is going to change when you exactly. cut those ties. I agree. I think it's completely okay to outgrow people. Yeah. People sometimes, like in life, and it sounds so cliche, but it's like some people are here forever and some people are here for seasons. Like it's okay to outgrow somebody and you shouldn't feel bad about the fact that y'all interests don't align anymore. Agreed. Y'all can go y'all separate ways. It doesn't have to be like a bad situation. Like you can have a conversation with her and let her know I fully support ghosting myself. But <laughs> you know, cause sometimes yeah. you don't really owe people an explanation. Y'all just no. y'all just grown apart. Y'all can start talking less. It's not even worth the argument. Yeah. Man. Nine times out of ten, they was gonna call you a bitch ass nigga anyway. Right. They was gonna be like, bitch, let's go you ahead don't and be get, doing shit neither. Let's get right. it out the way. Yeah. <laughs> like, you ain't like, growing either. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she probably already knows and feels that energy. So it's like you doing her a disservice. Yeah. So yeah. Just cut that. It ain't nothing nothing cut that, man. Yeah, I just think go ahead. <laughs> Let it be what it is. All okay. right, question number two. So question number two. Hey, ladies, love y'all in the podcast, but let's get into it because this is long, LOL. I'm 25 and I'm currently in school to obtain my doctorate degree. I got my education, but my first dream was starting a family and being a stay-at-home mom and wife. I have only been in two real relationships. I'm currently living with my boyfriend who does pay all of the bills and provides. However, I have recently abandoned the idea of having a family and believing in true love because in my head, no man truly wants just one woman. I left my ex for cheating on me one time. Yes, it's very strict in this bitch. And I've caught my current boyfriend trying to entertain other women in the past, DMing, texting, and yes, I do check that phone. He claims that he has changed and wants it all with me, but it's hard for me to trust him. I know that I'm an attractive woman and can get anyone that I want, but I'm a lover girl at heart and I just want a faithful and honest partner. Am I just young with little experience and letting a few bad apples ruin things for me or is it true that you have to choose the lesser evils when it comes to being with a man? I'm willing to play delusional and act as if ignorance is bliss for the time being, but I refuse to bring a child into this world unless there is pure genuine love with one man that I can 100% depend on. When you go through somebody's phone, you looking for trouble. You don't trust him neither. You don't trust him either. Like, a relationship is nothing without trust. Because I've been there. And it's miserable. Because <laughs> it's like every time this person does something, you think they're up to no good. When you trust the man, like, you don't even want to go through his phone. So it's like, that's yeah. a sign that this is not your person. Now, we have said this before. I do, as I get older, I do believe there are men who want to be with one person. You know, like, you can't put that thought process on all men. I don't like to categorize people. Is it going to be hard to find? You know, maybe so, maybe not. But I think it's worth it in the journey of things because love is a beautiful thing to experience. Mm -hmm. So if that matters to you and that's what you want, like you can have anything you want out of this life. I truly believe that. So if you really want a man that's only about you, you can have that. So it's like, why stay with this person? If you want to be with somebody who's going to be 100% about you, you can find that. So I think even you being in a relationship and having to go through a nigga phone and X, Y, Z, that's miserable. So you're going to settle for that and do you're going to go through this nigga phone for the rest of your life? Right. That's, I mean, that's crazy to me. What you think? I can't speak on it from a woman's perspective because I'm not a woman. <laughs> and I, I, I can see how difficult it could be because me being who I am, I get what I get, but that's just a regular chick talking about a regular nigga. Mm -hmm. So it just, it happens every day. So for me, I just know I've been in relationships where I haven't cheated and I've been able to keep it solid. And it just depends on who, how you choose and how you're moving. I also know it takes a long time for men to, you know, really figure that shit out. Right. And that grace period isn't really there because as soon as you hit adulthood, it's like, nigga, we need to settle down and mm -hmm. this is the last vagina that you're going to have for <laughs> the rest of your life. And a lot of niggas ain't trying to sign up for that. Right, right. You know, it's not as easy to sign up for it as, mm -hmm. as it sounds. So, you know, it takes a couple years for niggas to, you know, surface a few more vaginas <laughs> and, and figure it out. And then a lot of women, you know, they figure out if they want to deal with you know, niggas who cheat or niggas who lie or niggas who aren't faithful, or if they want to wait the amount of time that it takes for a man to fully mature. Or like you said, there are some men who who don't cheat, but they might not be in the other areas that they want. You know, right. They might not be a protector. They might not be a provider. They might not be, 
You know what I mean? So it's it's a crazy fucked up ass, uh, you know, dynamic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think everybody who is responsible is just, you know, they just live in their life. And for a woman, the best thing is to choose what you want to deal with. Yeah. Like I always say that's person. You can find it. You, you just got to choose what you want to deal with. That's what I was going to say. I feel like you have to figure out what works for you. Because mm-hmm. I feel like people have this, the, the problem with a lot of people, and I'm realizing that as I get older, I'm just coming to this realization, like people think that you're going to have like this fairy tale love story mm-hmm. yeah. that we all read about or we seen in Disney movies and shit. And in reality, like, no, shit don't really be like that. It's always going to be something. Right. Mm-hmm. Whoever you choose to be with, it's always going to be something that you might not, that, that it's like you might not want this thing or you might not want to have to deal with it but you like "Mm." they check off all the other boxes so this one thing is okay so I think as a woman you have to ask yourself what are you okay with dealing with and once you figure that out then it'll be easier to narrow down what type of man you want to be with because trust is important and if you feel like you have to look through a nigga DMs and look through his text messages and check his phone and all that when he haven't did anything to make you feel like you needed to do that because from what I read, you, he hasn't done anything to make you feel that way. You just wanted to check, and then you seen him messaging other girls or whatever. So it's like you already didn't trust him. So I think you have to figure out what you're okay with and go from there. But you also need to realize trust is an important factor because you always going to find something wrong if you look at mm-hmm. yeah. And going back to the, the boxes thing you were saying, I always say, like, if somebody can check off eight Majority. out of ten of your boxes, you winning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Like, you're going to have to bend a little on some certain things, but, like, if you make a list of what's most important and what's not, if you if they missing them last two boxes, like, you know, you, you winning. Yeah. Nobody is perfect, you know what I'm saying? So, good luck, sis, but going through people's phone, that ain't it. I agree. That I agree. So, yes, Wiz, we want you to tell everybody where they can find you. Yeah. But first, before that, I kind of wanted you to talk a little bit about, because I know you're really, like, heavy in the cannabis business. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted you to kind of touch on that and, like, your business. And yeah. All right. Uh, well, the cannabis business is growing. Mm-hmm. It's becoming um, more worldwide accepted. Mm-hmm. It's a global thing. Yeah. And um, just the way that people look at weed now is totally different. Mm -hmm. Even you'll see me, like, I still smoke on camera, but I don't smoke as much on camera Mm -hmm. because it's a more corporate thing of, like, being high and being stoned. And, like, there is, it's moving towards advertisements. It's moving towards making other people money. Mm -hmm. So it has to be looked at at, like, the other products. Okay. Things like that. So with monetizing, with social media, with everything p- that pushes, you know, people's brands, it's just merging the marijuana into mm-hmm, it. And mm-hmm. everybody already is down with the lifestyle, but they're starting to see the medicinal benefits of it. They're starting to see the social benefits of it. They're starting to see that crime is dropping. They're starting to see that uh, less deaths from drunk drivers mm-hmm. are happening. Mm-hmm. So a lot of things that are like physical numbers that, that um, you know, come with the cannabis business, are helping to change it as well as me being the face of it, having my own company, which is Khalifa Kush, mm-hmm. and um, owning you know a menu of strains and being able to put them in Thailand, being able to put them in Africa, China. Um, we're moving to Germany. We're going to be in Dubai when they do their thing out there. That's dope. Yeah. yeah, so as the laws change and as it becomes more widely accepted, you'll just see you know the way that people receive it a little bit differently. And me and my partners have been on the forefront of it for like, you know, the past 10, 15 years. Burner been in it before me, but Burner was the one who really put me on. Mm-hmm. And um, in the next five years, you're just going to see it keep growing. I agree. Like, yeah. things are definitely changing. Because, I mean, even here in the States, like, it's so many states that it's legal now. Yeah. Man, I went to Amsterdam. I was high for like three days. Mm-hmm. It was so crazy because yeah. they had the, the coffee shop. Uh-huh. And you just walk in. Get your weed, go to a bar. You literally just sit at a bar. Mm -hmm. So it's like even like their setup, like I can see that happening here like eventually. For sure. sure. Even places like, you know, Georgia, which they're like totally against weed. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to flip like this. Oh, for sure. And then you'll see in Atlanta, Mm -hmm. you know, little bars where you Mm -hmm. just smoke weed and chill. You'd be like, damn, this is exactly what the fuck we was talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It was lit. Like, just being able to walk in, Mm -hmm. it was was a good time. They make tea and there's all types of Mm -hmm. different things. There's a whole business behind it. 
that in the legal areas it's booming. Mm-hmm. But in areas that it's not legal, they still, you know, yeah. round upon it. And per usual, yeah. the South, we the last to catch on. Yeah. It's all good. It's it, here, Texas. I love the South. We're yeah, we're in Florida right now, which was a big move. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. you live in Florida now? No, no, the Khalifa. Oh, the the, the company. Yeah. Okay. The companies in Florida. So, um, but yeah, it's just one place at a time, and whatever the benefits that they see. That makes them change their mind. Mm-hmm. It just happens throughout time. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. 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 Okay. So let us know as far as like music and all that yeah. stuff, what you got going on. Uh, I got a new album coming out um, next month. It's March now, so in April. Okay. I'm going to drop Cushion Orange Juice 2. Oh, oh okay. we ready for that. Yeah, for sure. Okay. People have been asking for it for a long a last time. Long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm independent, so I'm doing everything. It's all Taylor gang. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, this is just my opportunity to just start back where I left off. Yeah. So I'm fin- I'm putting the finishing touches on that, and I'm going to drop it in April. Okay. And I'm going to be doing a lot of festivals. I'm performing at Stagecoach this year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, which is right after Coachella. So if anybody goes to Coachella and they still want to come see me, y'all can get the Stagecoach tickets. Okay. I'm going to be smacking. Okay. Um, I'm going to be all over the world. Um, I'm on TikTok now. Not you be TikTok. Like a motherfucker. Yeah. I see you. <laughs> yeah, TikTok is cracking, y'all. Yeah. Is I'll be trying to, right to learn now. a little one, too. Yeah. But I fuck with I... TikTok heavy. Mm-hmm. So I'm on there. Okay. Uh, doing my little skits and my little content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's all just going to come together. I just feel like, um, you know, being in the, the game for the amount of years that I have. Yeah. I have the chance to um, introduce myself to a whole new fan base. Mm-hmm. And that's exciting to me because when I first introduced myself, that was one of my favorite times of my career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So being able to reintroduce myself, I feel like I'm going to have a real good time. Yeah, it's fun. And that's what we were talking about that the other day, like how Usher just like, he's kind of like reinvented himself. For sure. And he's like, yeah. Because that's why I said like the, the music industry is lacking. Like we need to bring our people back so y'all can show these youngins <laughs> what the fuck some good music. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. Now I do have one more question before we get out of here. Are you going to uh, work with Juicy J again? Because you and Juicy J together <laughs> is like yeah. strip club anthem. Yeah, yeah for sure. The, y'all make magic together. Yeah, Juicy, my brother, we definitely going to do another album. Okay. For sure. Yeah, that's we, what I'm we, Looking forward to he's, he's he's a phone call away. It really just takes me getting in the studio with him because yeah. he, he always cooking up. Yeah. So yeah, we just got to link up. And Ty, Ty's Taylor gang too. Yeah. He's doing his thing with Ye. We're super proud and super happy with what he's doing mm-hmm. on number one. And the music that they're creating is really, really good. Yes. So, you know, we still got the brand and the gang out there doing our thing. It's mm-hmm. just the crowd has changed. Yeah. The, the, you know, music moves fast. I look at it like sports. If you're on a team for 10 years, bro, nobody knows who the hell you are. Right. But in music, we have the opportunity to, you know, recreate and, you know, just reintroduce ourselves over and over and over again. Even like, you know, we have an advantage on movie stars, whatever it is, because some of them, they don't even fucking, you don't even know them till they're in their 50s. Right, right? exactly. But you see a lot of my peers, we started in our teens, made it through our 20s, we're in our 30s now. We're gonna still keep doing it because we have examples in front of us, like Snoop, mm-hmm. like Hove, like Wayne, like you know the people who are who made their name and are still like reaching back and mm-hmm. right. and giving back and doing shit for the young niggas. So it's fun. It's a good time. It's a fun time. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. I be talking shit on Twitter still. <laughs> um, I'm on YouTube. I'm always doing videos and shit on there. Yeah. Um, I'm about to. I have my series day to day that I started on YouTube a long time ago, but I sold it to a streaming company. Oh, that's so the, yeah. The next season is gonna be on streaming services, so we're about to start shooting that as well. Okay. Yeah, writing some movies. Uh, me and Kid Cudi been talking about doing some movies. Oh my God, Intergalactic. Yeah, was, it was like, good. It was yeah. really good. That is like my favorite movie. Yeah. Like it was. Do love that movie. I ran that movie in the ground. Mm-hmm. He's got some really good ideas. Oh my God, that, it was so dope. Yeah, so so I'm excited to see that y'all too. working on. It's gonna be fun. Is there like a, a artist um, that's like in the new generation, like young people that you want to work with? Everybody. Yeah. Anybody and everybody. I usually just DM them, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if I hear their music, I'll just be hitting them up. Or I'll get their beat and rap over it. They'll be like, oh, good luck, OG. (laughs) But, like, producer-wise, I want to work with Timbaland. Okay. Um, And I want to work with Swiss Beats. Okay. When y'all hear that shit... 
I'm gonna it's be ready. Gonna crazy. Be crazy. Oh, we yeah. ready for it. It's gonna right. be sick. I'm excited. Well, thank you so much yes. for sitting. This, this was so, so much fun. fun. Yeah. Oh, have fun too. Thank yes. you guys. Thank yes. You. Hell yeah. So y'all make sure y'all come back next week. We'll see y'all. Bye y'all. Bye. All right, y'all ready? We got Wiz and the highlights in this motherfucker. Period. Y'all ready to set the mood? Mm -hmm. I'm ready. I like that. Y'all, this our jam. Hey. Uh. Hey. Oh, you was uh. ready. Oh, I'm just ad living. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Seven o'clock. Gonna die. Somebody, I'm girl. in my trap top cruising the street. Oh. Uh. Here we go. Yeah, talking about him. It's, it's seven, seven o'clock on the dot. I'm in my drop top, cruising in the streets. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I got a real pretty, pretty little thing that's waiting for me. Ooh. I pull up, anticipating good love. Don't keep me waiting. I got plans to put my hands yeah. in places I've never seen, girl, you know what I mean. Now let me take you to a place nice and quiet where there ain't no one there to interrupt. Ain't got a rush, I just wanna take it nice and slow. Now tell me what you wanna do with me. See, I've been waiting for this for so long. We're making love until the sun comes up. Baby, I just want to take it nice and slow. Baby, tell me what you want to do. Now here we are, driving around town, contemplating where I'm going to take you down. Girl, you got me saying, my, 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 my. I wish that I, I could pull over yeah, and get, get this thing started right now. I want to do something freaky to you, baby. I don't, I don't think, think they heard me. me. I, I want to do something freaky to you, baby. So call out my name. They call me U-S-H-E-R-R-A-Y-M. O -N -D. O -N -D. Now, baby, tell me what you, you want to do with me. me. Got, Got a nigga feeling like Joe to see. Every, Every time that you roll with me, hold me, try to be control me nice and slowly. You know, never letting go, never messing up the flow. That's how the hook go. Come on. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> nice, nice and quiet. quiet. Well, there, there ain't no one that's an interrupt. He ain't got a rush. I just want to take it nice and slow. Baby, tell me what you want to do with me. I've been waiting for this for so long. So long. Making love until the sun comes up. Baby, I just want to take it nice and slow. Period. Uh, now tell me. Now tell me. Do you want to get freaky? Cause I freak you right, I will. I freak you right, I will. I freak you like no one has ever, ever made you feel. I freak you right, I will. I freak you right, I will. I freak you, freak you like no one has ever made you feel, yeah. You hit that hoe. <laughs> Shout out to Wiz and the highlights. That was fun. We'll see y'all next week. Hoe ass niggas. Period.